Today I will show how I make color corrections in a darkroom, how I learn what is the difference in the color and which direction I should go with the colors. And I will explain a little bit like my mind steps and my thoughts about the color and the how picture should like. And for today I have a strange looking print and strange looking photograph just because the object inside the print is not really uh, understandable in color. So it's actually kind of a monotonic color and you don't have a like distinguished colors there. So it's completely not easy to understand in which direction you should go with the color corrections and also this picture is made with the artificial light so I have a mixture of two lights it's daylight balance and tungsten balance and because it's a mixture of light and with a low light situation it's not really easy to correct it from film photography itself so and the whole process is actually not fully about the darkroom itself so it's really helped me uh, to correct pictures in post uh, with the just scanning film. So, and I think for this particular picture, I make better uh, process and better product as a print than in a scan. Before we take a look on the negative, let's prepare my darkroom. Starting with the heating up chemistry to the proper temperature. I'm using Ketanol Chemistry and Cinestill Circulator for bringing chemistry to 35 degrees. So it's a quite quick process. And this professional kit also have an option to 30 degrees, so you can develop it on 35 or 30 degrees. Because I store my enlarger in the room, I try to keep it clean with this bag. And because I have a cat, my negatives also stored in this archival folder. Some people ask about this negative sleeves. They actually made from paper. Not sure if it's better or worse, but I think it's collect less static electricity, and so it means it's more pure, just in terms of dust. But in the same time, it's still transparency, so you can put it on the light and you can clearly see what is on your negatives. And I think if you want to make a test print, it's also possible through these negative sleeves. So for today, I'm interested in this strip, so it's a Porter 400, and we just need a one frame from this one, so this in the middle. And as you can understand, my 35mm camera, it's everyday camera, and I have a lot of pictures to print. So let's start with the loading negative inside the enlarger. I have this universal frame from Durst, so it's really cool. I really like the idea. So it's a two anti-Newton glasses and I have a small levers from each side and you can make a mark for 120 or 35 millimeter film. And with the removed filter and fully open aperture, we can inspect what pictures we have. And because I used 120 film before, we need to change the frame and adjust these small framing parts inside the carrier to crop the picture to the proper length. Today I want to start with the small prints and unfortunately in the darkroom the small prints and the bigger prints it's exactly the same type of process and exactly the same type of problems. I already know this picture have an excellent sharpness in the area here because I have a negative scan. So after we get the focus, let's go back in the settings and set up around f8 and pop up the filter. And once again, let's start with my color calibrator as initial point. I'm using color calibrator starting from cyan channel and I have a 10 second setting on the color calibrator and searching for the maximum intensity on my photo table with the prop head. And after you find it, you actually correct exposure or on the head or inside the calibrator with a timing knob. And when the calibration is finished, I will use this paper. So I have a separation in the darkroom, so I have a sink, and this is my wet part of the darkroom, and I have a dry part, which is on my rolling table. So let's check the temperature. It should be already 35 degrees, and if it's not, we will wait a little bit. If it's overheated, you just need to wait until the circulator will bring it down. And I will make the standard process for A4 with the 45 seconds of rotation in a color developer and 45 seconds of rotation in the black fix. For some reason in internet there's a lot of myths about array 4 chemistry, that this is like one-time use chemistry for some reason, but in reality it's highly reusable and this is how it's meant to work and this is how it works in the industrial tools. And this is our first test print, so let's take a look how far away we are from right point. So I already see I have a technical problem on the print again. For some reason it's not easy to load the print inside the small easel. 
and today I wanna try a small trick with my phone, so I will take a picture. So you need to be precise with the white balance, otherwise your phone will automatically correct your picture and make it look pretty, so do not try to make the like full frame of this picture, otherwise it will correct it by default. But before, let's write down all the settings what I have on my head, inside my lab book, and start with the logic behind my corrections. I want to use Lightroom Mobile as my guide for corrections. And first step, we need to crop the picture to the proper size. And going in this section with the color corrections, I have a color grading and I can choose different sets and I can select global corrections, which works for shadows, highlights and mid-tones. And as you can see, you have exactly the same wheel what is behind our corrections. So we have a RGB wheel and you have a CMY wheel. So we have a magenta correction, for example, here, yellow correction here, and the cyan correction on opposite side. And rotating like this, first of all, you can understand in which direction you should go with the corrections. And the distance from the center is actually how far you should go with these corrections. Because this is not subtractive correction, this is additive. If you balance the picture like this, it means you just need to add more of the filters from yellow so to make a picture less yellow but for my personal understanding i just want to run the test printer for all of the channels in the same drum so i make the steps with the 10 so 10 in both directions and run up with the all test prints for all three channels and if we have all test strips probably you can easily also with me understand the logic behind the corrections on this tricky print so let's quickly dry it and put it in my lab book and try to analyze the steps and the results what we should make. I will put all the settings close to the print itself. So in future I can go back and analyze in which direction I can move for also for different prints because it's usually not so obvious how the picture is actually overlaid with the color. So I have a middle section on all of three of them. So it means my number three print is actually position what I have from my color calibrator. But because I make a steps of 10, so I just off by five or six steps from color calibrator. So you can say we kind of don't have a color calibrator and I just print all the tests for my test printer. So let's take a look on the color wheel. And this is first strip, it's actually magenta channel. And as you can see, it's this region, it's a green light. Basically, it's a subtraction of the magenta channel. It's the right portion of the print. So if we cut more magenta, we're actually going in opposite side of the print and opposite side of the wheel. And the same principle I have here in the cyan channel. So if you want to add cyan channel, it means you need a reduce filter. And if you want to remove the cyan channel, it means you need an add filter. And on the right side, we have a less cyan and more this kind of a reddish color, which is opposite to cyan. And on the left side, we have a, this cyanish tint for whole picture. And this tint on the picture, it's quite tricky because it's really close to yellow and you cannot distinguish it usually from yellow to red. Uh, it depends on the picture. So this is why I'm for testing and for experiments, especially use the cyan channel filter on top of my color head. And most of the people for some reason say it's sacrilegious and you cannot use this type of a channel on a photo head. Because by eye you can start to move the only yellow channel, but in reality you just need to make a few small steps in the cyan channel. And also, as I can say from here, my picture is actually corrected here in the around 100 on the yellow channel. So let's put all the tests inside my lab book and tape them down and put the settings back. So I will put the 100 on yellow channel and make an additional test print with exactly the same chemistry and exactly the same process. And on this step I actually expecting the neutralized picture. But even on a wet print I can see I have a whole print blue. So it means or I have a mistake somewhere in my settings or I choose the wrong test strip or it's some different problem. But as you can see here the whole print is blue. So let's figure out what is the problem. And it's quite simple, so I forget to uncheck the cyan channel. So I will just redo the same print and put the cyan channel on a proper position. Because it was minus 20 on from what I need, I expecting from this test print to be exactly the neutral picture, which is calibrated inside this glass things on the table. 
And after quick drying, let's check if we're far away or close enough. First thing, what I can say, the table is actually looks white and the portion what we calibrate on looks actually white and good enough. So glass looks like glass, but unfortunately the whole balance of the picture is far off from optimal. So on my taste and on my eye, it looks too bluish, but more or less natural. We need to understand in this picture, we're actually correcting for the for white balance and not really for natural point in the color corrections. So let's run additional test. And for this one, I increase exposure for five seconds and I also decrease for 10 points my yellow channel. So it means I will have a more yellow and I have more dense picture. So let's quickly wash out my test and put it on the wall for quick drying. And on this picture, you can clearly see what I meant in the beginning of the video. So it's really tricky shot. You have a mixture of artificial yellow light and the white light on the table. So the wall behind the composition is actually yellow and everything in the picture is quite blue and the table in the picture is white. I really like the results what I have for this picture. So let's write it down directly on the picture. And if you compare the initial picture, it's actually balanced for neutral white balance. And the second picture looks too blue. So it's neutral with the colors, but not really the optimal picture for our representation. Because in this yellow light, this table behind this composition should be yellow and the main table should be white. And from these settings, let's try to make the final picture from the easel with the white borders. After exposure of 15 seconds, I will run the same development procedure. So it's a color developer for 45 seconds and rotation constantly in both directions and the 45 seconds of mix fix. And we already have our final prints because I was not sure if I loaded first print correctly, I will just load the second paper in the same tank and I was not mistaken, so it's not easy to distinguish in the dark, especially with this type of easel, if your paper is underneath the hooks on the easel or not really. But the color looks really good and the picture looks balanced. I don't really have any type of strange color casts and the correction is exactly the same corrections what I actually show you in the initial beginning of the video. So we correct a little bit of cyan channel, so it's a 10 points from cyan channel and I correct yellow channel also. And the most interesting part, I can use my color calibrator to make a different enlargement. So for this, I need to put the settings back in the cyan channel and find the maximum exposure setting. And because I don't want to recalibrate my calibrator, I just need to adjust the time knob on cyan channel and exchange lens from 80 millimeters to 50 millimeters to make enlargers bigger. And most probably only one difference will be focusing on the frame. So it means it will be a little bit different distance. And also exposure will be slightly different for bigger print. So let's start with the aligning easel underneath the table and choose the proper enlargement for this picture to fit underneath easel and refocus again on the grain. I'm finding the same spot again and choosing the proper focus. And now we can continue with the color calibrator. So it's a little bit messy here because this lens have only clicks. I cannot set up the aperture and fully control the exposure with the aperture. So I'm searching only for maximum position. And after I remove the calibrator, I put this three seconds, which is different from my initial calibration. But as you can imagine, it's much better to use this type of lens when you have a switch and you can rotate the aperture without any clicks. So let's make a bigger test print and we check if our exposure is still in the range. And because we're using 10 to 20 seconds exposure, even deviation with the one, two or three seconds, it's not really noticeable, but I think this exposure is really good. Unfortunately, I have a small hair piece or small dust spot there. So I will try to remove it from the carrier and make a bigger final brand. So it's a load number 18. So let's start with the color developer for 45 seconds with the constant rotation in both directions and continue with the flex fix for 45 seconds, also with the constant rotation in both directions. And when it's done, let's put all the chemicals back in the bottles, open the drum and take a look on our final print. So far I have no technical problems, so my borders looks right, the colors more or less looks right and correct and the same thing for the small picture and bigger picture. So let's quickly dry it and compare my big print with the small print. 
Personally, I like the format of the small prints, but I always miss the details from bigger prints. I personally really like the format of the small prints, but bigger print will give you more depth in the photo and it's just a different look. Usually prints from my videos are available on my website. And that's it for today and thank you for watching.